This over here is one of the most interesting AI mini PCs and it can do stuff that I've never seen any other mini PC do before. This is called the Atomman X7 Ti and let's take a look. This video has been brought to you by Asus ProArt PZ13, the ultra portable AI laptop for creators with military grade durability, professional OLED display. Oh and did I mention that the keyboard and the screen also detach for ultimate portability and much more. Go check out our whole playlist and the full overview in the video description below. Thanks Asus ProArt for sponsoring this part of the video. Touchscreen, camera and a fingerprint power button. But there's a lot more. Okay, so inside the box we have this guy here and we have its stand. Wow, so this is new. So this is a 125 watt power brick from Mini's forum. Look at that. Looks like they've managed to make their own, finally. They're not using a third party one. It's still 19 volts and 6.32 amperes. And we've got an HDMI cable. So from the front, we've got a little touchscreen, which we'll see how it works in a minute. There's two dots in there. They are microphones and then there are camera as well. But there's also an IR sensor. So it does support Windows. Hello, face recognition, which is interesting. And then this button on the top there is also fingerprint reader. So you can have fingerprint face recognition. So it seems very, very secure. This is a mechanical slider here that actually locks the you know full HD camera there. We've got a full size SD card slot up to 100 megabits per second. So UHS-1 speeds. Then from the sides, which is interesting, we actually have some very interesting ports. USB Type-A 2.0 port, which is the black port there. 10 gigabit USB port in there. We've got HDMI and Display port, as well as two LAN ports. They are both 5 gigabit LAN ports, which is a very unusual thing to see, actually. So altogether, you can have link aggregation and have 10 gigabits um, LAN or network connectivity, USB 4 and an Oculink. And then on the other side, we have a reset button, two more USB type A ports, USB 4 and a mic and headphone gumbo jack. On the back, we have grill and I suppose the screws are underneath these legs there. We'll figure that out in a minute. Little grill on the bottom there as well. But the stand here works like this. You're going to flip it over like that. And these holes will go into there just like that and it slots into there so basically you can have the pc face you like that so you can have your cameras and you know everything face recognition towards you or to the side if you want to have it like that so let's turn this guy on Alrighty, something on the screen here already one tip i have found is when getting a new pc don't plug any LAN cables into it because then it automatically thinks it's got the internet and you're going to have to register with Microsoft and so on. So if you want to make just a local account, don't give it any internet, which I'm doing right now. Press I don't have internet because that will be good. Do you want to use your face to sign in faster and more securely? Yes, set up. Okay. Keep looking directly onto the camera. Okay, we're all set. The touch screen seems to be working as well straight away. Okay. I don't know what is going on in here. Okay, performance mode. Devo devices in performance mode. That is really cool. So you, I can just put it into performance mode all over here. So let me show you what's going on in there. So it's still installing some of these uh, updates on there. But let's take a look at this while it's doing that. So as you can see, we see different things on the screen. If you want to change the language, you're going to have to press these three buttons in there. And then this global and then select your language. There's a few languages there that they've translated it into. I am not sure which country that is. There's a, interestingly, it shows you the IO information here as well. Layout, so you can change the different layout, how you want it to be in there. Clock return. So here we can see a little bit of uh, information of temperature. I'm not sure where it pulls the temperature from because it doesn't know my location. I'm not sure. Here we can adjust the screen brightness, the volume. So it seems like there's some kind of uh, speakers built in as well then. Is that true? Oh, it seems to be going out only in there. So it doesn't have speakers built in, but we can adjust the volume. Let's have a look, 100%. Yeah, as you can see, it just it adjusts that on Windows, which is pretty cool. Let's have a look at if the brightness. No, the brightness is only for this screen, I suppose. Then we have upload and downloads speeds as well as the fan speed that goes out from the back we can see cpu temperature 15 percent utilized 71c 5 gigahertz 2 gigahertz this is intel core ultra 9 185h okay 
So let's see if we can touch. Look at that fingerprint sensor. Okay, gotta try this. Let's try sleep. Okay, here. Oh, it already opened because it saw my face in there. Boom, opened. Um, okay, let me go on the side. Well, that was very, very actually fast. One of the fastest. Sometimes even the laptops don't open as, as fast. So I'm gonna cover my face here and then see if I can go fingerprint. Boom. That works really good. Very, very fast and very good. So I'm super happy about that. Okay. So this is the camera and the microphone coming from this Atom Man X7Ti. And uh, let me know how does it sound? What does it look like? This is pretty much perfect lighting. And uh, what I'm seeing over there is uh, it's kind of an okay job. Now, let me know what you think. How does it sound like? Comment below. Whoa, what is this? Thermally throttling. Why are we thermally throttling at 73 degrees, 77 maximum there? What's going on? Why, 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 why? Peak or eight and nine. They're going 82, 80. Okay, peak or nine went to 90 for a second there. But why are we thermally throttling there? Look, still thermally throttling right now. That is not good. Only at 27 watts per peak. Okay, what's going on? Why are we throttling? I think the core maybe tries to, okay, it tries to boost to 5.1 gigahertz, but it can't quite for some reason. That's why it's thermally throttling. It is 27.2 degrees in this room, so it's got a little warm. Okay, let's restart, get the updates done, then see you again. Okay, while it's uh, updating, let me show you uh, the interesting translation here. Okay, here, there's the three modes. Energy efficient mode, which is energy saving mode, there's no space, then just semicolon, and then directly everything bang on into one sausage. Reduces equipment. So just so you know, it reduces equipment. Balance mode means working mode, equipment performance is. No, I'm not sure what it is. Then we've got performance mode, which means performance mode, device performance mode is. So just so you know the difference with these things. Now, while it's doing the updates, who is this PC for and why do I see this actually being a very interesting device that perhaps a lot of people at home want to use this? Now, if you are a person who does maybe works from home, you do a lot of writing and working with maybe different monitors, working with spreadsheets, writing, maybe some Photoshop and so on. I can see this being a great device because the Intel Ultra 9 185H is a very powerful CPU. Now the GPU for gaming and you know very heavy video editing isn't good but if you're just splicing video and editing this it's completely doable. Now at home you have plenty of options for upgradability and devices that you can connect to it. USB 4, two of them. We've got very fast LAN ports if you want to connect to your NAS to access footage. I'm not sure if you're one of those people, but I love to keep an eye on how my PC hardware is doing. I can hear the fan ramping up. I'd like to know, okay, why? Is it the GPU, CPU, what's going on? So here you can easily see, or if some background tasks is taking a lot of CPU power, you can easily do that in here. You can see how much SSD, RAM, GPU, CPU all being used. Now, this is quite a bit cheaper than some of the laptops that you can get, but it requires monitors and keyboards and something like that. So if you want to have, you know, external keyboard and mouse working with this you'll have to get them ex extra now let's take a look how does the multi-core cinebench cpu test work here how much wattage are we pushing through right now i'm on the performance mode and that is pushing 65 watts through cpu package is 72 degrees it's not thermally throttling right now but it was before so maybe when it's trying to push to the 5.1 gigahertz it's thermally throttling but right now we're like max 80 on some of these cores but high 70s p cores are going three point well here's the difference they're all trying to do different things some of them 3.9 some of them 3.7 so we're getting about 18,000 points not a bad performance or score at all but let's turn this off and then try it again without the hardware monitor so the temps were quite okay bear in mind it is it's quite warm in this room 27.2 degrees but it keeps 65 watts in this small form factor pretty well under wraps okay a little bit lower score 17,700 but let's put it into the balance mode let's see what the wattage we're pushing through the CPU now I can hear that the fans have gone a little bit more quieter let's take a look what happens now I bet it's 45 watts 56 watts 60 watts okay so we've shaved 5 watts off seems like the CPU clock speeds are roughly about the same bear in mind there's very low power e cores there as well 6p cores 8E cores and then some more extra low power efficiency cores. 
as you can see, pretty much the same score as balanced mode. We lost maybe a couple hundred points. Seems like not that big of a deal. Let's put it to energy saving mode. So what does that mean now? What what are we pushing through now? Okay, so now it's 48 watts. And now I can see a bit of a clock speed reduction there. Okay, now it was about 1000 to 1500 points kind of lost in there. I guess the balance mode is what makes the most sense. Even The performance though doesn't necessarily give you that much more performance, but the fans are just a little bit more on. So if you're doing rendering or some CPU, uh, you know, intensive tasks, then put it onto the performance mode. I'm happy with the CPU performance. I like that there's no kind of a plugin that you have to install to get the screen working. The screen just works. It's just there. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to turn this off. I want to see what's inside and what can we change in terms of upgradability. What's this device like? So far, I'm super happy about it. Even the stand, as you can see, there's a hole in the back. That hole is where the fan sucks in air and then blows it out from the front. Very clever design. And this way, you're not actually putting the device on the floor like that, where there's, you know, it can't suck the air in anywhere. You just put it on there. There's plenty of airflow. Really, really good. So. I'm guessing the screws will be underneath these rubber feet, but the rubber feet aren't like elevated. So if you do want to put this like on the floor or on the table like that, it's really not going to work. Yep, there's our screws. Whoa, look at the size of these screws. What's going on? I didn't expect that. Maybe the other side comes out first then. Okay, it does come off, but you need some serious prying to get this off okay oh, yeah so there's clips on the side as you can see these that hold it down okay so there's another one of these like kind of a daughter motherboard things going on with this usb port in there so we'll just keep it over there like that okay okay so minutes forum as always one of the best mini pc designs that I've, I've seen. They always design something so cleverly and so well, the way to like keep everything cooled down. Now there's a lot of screws in here. One, two, th six, 12 screws in order to get this heatsink off. This now comes off with the actual fan. Okay, so the fan is attached to the same thing. Just pull the fan cable off. It's quite a deep fan, probably 15 millimeters deep looking at the cooling solution here we've got heatsink here which is actually a little bit deeper than usually usually we see a little bit of a strip like that that's quite deep and then we've got three heat pipes going over just to there one is interestingly bent a little bit higher fits onto the higher bit and then we've got a lower bit that goes probably over the vrms in there as well so in here we do have an M.2 slot. They say there's two M.2 slots. Is the other one on the other side? Because if it is, it's very faffy to change. Okay, so this heatsink is just put on, just like that, just stuck on. I don't know where there's a hole in there because we can't actually get your screw into there either. Because they've only, I think, drilled it halfway, not all the way. That's the M.2 in there, I suppose, which means it's only an M.2 20 30 slot not 20 80 slots it's a clever way to have two slots in there but the way it works is you put the 20 80 in there and then 20 30 on this side boom and then you've got one screw it's very clever actually look one screw that holds it both together and now you don't have to actually go to the other side of the motherboard because there's no cooling there's basically just a screen in there nothing for you to see really interestingly there is another fan header on this motherboard just over here as you can see it's the same as on that side where you had the cpu fan so perhaps they were designing this to actually have active cooling for these ssds or these ram heat sinks as well but they probably thought um no point again crucial ram with this little thermal sticker on the top. The chips are only on the top side on both of them. So the heat gets transferred up and then across. Nothing to really see here. One thing I don't see is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna uh, card or M.2 card, which means that it's built in. The interesting thing is this has Wi-Fi 7 built in, which is super, super fast. I guess this comes directly on the Intel Core Ultra there. Okay, putting the heatsink back over there. 
well, I guess we'll have to line it up perfectly because remember the screws in there that need to line up. Yeah, I guess it does. So one way what you can do is you don't actually have to screw these heat sinks off from there, just from the main silver heat sink on that side, because then you can actually just pull it off because that heat sink there, the M.2 heat sink, is not plugged into anything or screwed in so you can just take it off. Okay, let's put the 12 screws back. Upgrading this PC or opening this up really is not what this is meant for. Like you can do it if you wanted to, but it's not designed to be upgraded. You kind of just put in what you want from the get go. Now you can buy the bare bones of this, add your RAM and SSD yourself. I think that's an option if you already have that. Perhaps you have some sodiums from your laptop or some whatever, then you can buy a bare bones version because often what happens is the OEMs will charge you premium for the sodium slots where you can buy them very cheap on Amazon or upgrade the RAM, possibly can do that, but 32 gigabytes seems to be a pretty good option there. So then what do we think about this Atom Man X7 Ti? I think it's a very interesting device. Now, as a creator or if a business owner, and you want to have something cheap working in the office that has still all the benefits of security in terms of fingerprint reader, a face scan to plug in, you've got an SD card, so you can do even some of the photo and video editing. Photo editing will be quite good actually, Photoshop if you're using um, Illustrator or something like that through the design you can do with this the ultra 9 is very very powerful cpu as you can see in multi-core and single core but it has some extras connectivity is good upgradability cpu obviously you can't but i'm happy that you can upgrade your ssd and ram if needed to and the last thing is ai obviously ai this is why the whole chip here is made for ai you know whether you want co-pilot or something like that now i personally am not using ai in my workflow yet as much i don't see how it can be better beneficial. Now, I'd love to know from you, if you're watching this, how do you use AI in your workflow? And if this PC with the AI capabilities of the Ultra 9 185H, would this be beneficial to you? And would this you know, speed up your workflow? I'm not sure. I'm still like kind of on the fence with the AI, seeing where this is going to go. Let me know your thoughts about the AI, but this is what this device kind of is all made for. AI, you can do it in your home, you know, generate pictures, generate whatever. If you're interested in picking this up, I'm going to leave the links in the description below. And if you want to reach out to me on Minect, I'll get back to all of my Minect messages, links in the description below. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.